So I've pretty much been a Mac user for my entire adult life. I got my first MacBook when I was 18, first going to university, and I really haven't looked back ever since. But over the last couple of years, I've been starting to get sick of Apple to say the least, and I've been looking for alternatives. From an outsider's perspective, it would seem like I am very much an Apple guy, but today that is about to change. After a long while sitting on the sidelines and wondering about this, today I have decided to try Linux for the first time. If you don't know me, I'm Spencer, and I like to talk about simple living, frugality, and digital minimalism let's get into it. So this is going to be essentially a real-time live react video as I try Linux for the very first time. I've downloaded a copy of Linux Mint Cinnamon just because that's one of the most popular distros that people are trying right now and I wanted to give that one a shot. Quick heads up for anybody who might not have heard of Linux before. It's basically an alternative operating system similar to Mac OS or Windows but it's free, it's open source, and it's built by communities of people rather than big corporations. And because Linux is free and open source a lot of different people have made their own versions of it customizing it to their liking, which is known as distributions or distros. To my understanding, a distro is basically its own flavor or version of Linux with its own look and feel and even tool set. The way that I'm going to be trying Linux today is booting it via USB using a tool called Ventoy. Ventoy is essentially a way to turn a USB stick into a bootable drive, which you can use to try Linux distros. The cool thing about Ventoy is it allows you to put multiple different distros on there. And when you go to boot up your computer, a menu appears and it allows you to select which one you'd like to choose. While this is slowly copying over to my memory stick, I'll tell you a little bit about what drew me to Linux in the first place. So I've been a Mac user for a long time, about 14 years I've had Mac computers and I've really had nothing else. But over the years I've come to find some of Apple's practices to be a little bit sickening. First of all, there's the walled garden aspect of the Apple ecosystem and then of course there's the price. But the thing that irks me the most about Apple I think is their anti-consumer practices really making it so hard to repair their devices. Now somebody pointed this out to me in the last video, I have to clarify that yes you can have these Apple products repaired if you need to. The battery, the screen, any sort of thing like that. But it has to be done by an Apple technician. Apple has made it extremely hard for the consumer to do these repairs. And this isn't even considering the fact that pretty much none of the parts of Apple computers are upgradable. You're not able to expand the storage or the RAM or anything like that. This is a great way for Apple to jam you up when you're first ordering the computer because you're going to overspec the thing so it'll have some level of longevity. So that led me to grab this computer that I have here, which is my Lenovo ThinkPad T480. I picked this T480 up just a couple of months ago because it checked a lot of boxes for me. First of all, this was a pretty good computer when it came out back in 2018, and as a result, it still has some pretty good specs and is a good performer today. The second thing that was really appealing about the T480 was just how repairable and even modifiable it is. Repairability-wise, the T480 has very little in common with my MacBook Pro and is a lot more similar to something you'd see from Framework. They use regular Phillips head screws on the body, so you don't need to have any special screwdriver to get in here. And once you're into this computer, just with a couple of simple guides or YouTube videos, you can replace things like the screen or the trackpad or the keyboard. And the battery, the RAM, and the storage can be switched out as well. But the downside of this device is that it came with Windows installed, and that was a bit of an ick for me. Personally, I don't have any reason to switch over from Mac to Windows because I just find Windows to be a little bit yikes. I mean, people are pretty sick of Windows lately. It seems like Microsoft is trying to push people over from Windows 10 to Windows 11. And the way that things are going with Windows, it seems like overall it's a worse experience. And I don't even want to get into the fact that they like show you ads and then they also take all of your data on your paid operating system. Like that is just too much for me. For me, moving into 2026, things like Linux and free and open source software and hardware, it kind of feels like the natural progression for where I'm going on this channel. This stuff is privacy focused, it's decentralized, and it's built around the idea of using your tech intentionally and not being used by it. So Windows was never gonna happen for me, but Linux, I'm interested. So the Ventoy setup is actually really easy to do. All you gotta do is put your USB stick in, go Go to the Ventoy website, which is ventoy.net, download the Ventoy file for whatever OS you're currently using, which is Windows for me, uncompress the file, run it, and then install it on your USB stick. It shouldn't take very long. Then we have to go to the site of the Linux distro that we want, and for me, this is going to be Linux Mint. So here we are on the Mint site. I'm going to go to the download button here, and then we're going to pick Cinnamon Edition for this first install. So hit download and then wait for that to go. So I got that downloaded and I have now put that on my stick. So now I'm powering off my computer and then we're gonna boot it back up, but this time using Ventoy. Now we gotta go into hands-free mode here. So I'm gonna start the computer up. This time we're gonna just keep tapping F12. Okay, so now we're gonna go down to flash disk and we're gonna hit go. Ventoy, we have Ventoy. Okay, so here we have Linux Mint. Okay, so now we wanna hit boot in normal mode. 
Here we go. We're getting in guys, Linux, first time. There's the logo. Wow, okay, we're in. Okay, wow, so we have, okay, a little battery icon in the corner, a clock, volume, Wi-Fi. What do we have over here? Oh, terminal, Firefox, files, and then a menu. Oh, okay. We have Firefox again, software manager, system settings, terminal, files. Oh, wow, okay, so it comes really pre-installed with everything. Like, I wasn't under sh wasn't really sure how this was gonna work. Um, yeah, everything's already here. So there's literally like, you could just get going with some of this. You could just boot this for somebody and they're in. You got a Bluetooth manager, you got accessibility options, like everything is already set up. There's already a pre-set up home folder, desktop, document, video, pictures, music, everything. Let's go on to Firefox here. Let's go straight to YouTube. It makes a new tab. If you click anywhere, it's making a new tab. If you click up top, okay. That's kind of what I was expecting it to do. You click at the very top of the browser, it fills it vertically. You click kind of just below that, it'll fill the screen. We gotta get an ad blocker. I get how people who are switching over from Windows would use this, especially if you're just like sick of Windows, you know, you were happy with your Windows 10 using your older computer and they are trying to push you over to Windows 11 and it doesn't work for your computer. You just wanna put something on your computer and get back to computing. I mean, this thing is just fully ready to rock. Like there's so many apps already built in. I guess this is the point of all of these like dialed in dedicated distros is it comes with a suite of apps already. So I'm opening the software manager now. It says it's generating the cache, but essentially what this thing does, I guess, is it's how you can download and manage all of your apps without having to go through the terminal to do so. Essentially the app store, I guess. Okay, so here we are. So this has all of the, yeah, the app alternatives that you would want. I see Google Earth, I see Whatsy, which is a WhatsApp web client for the Linux desktop. And then we got GIMP Classic, Blender, another classic. Oh, Caliber, nice, that's already there. Oh, Obsidian, you know, I, I haven't gotten into that myself, but a lot of people in the Discord, a lot of people like Obsidian. So join the Discord if you haven't. Let's try one, we'll download Caliber. Here we go. Calibre is how I manage all of my eBooks. All right, so Calibre installed. Let's launch it. I mean, there it is, that's Calibre. It's the way that I know it. I guess the crazy thing is, folks, I can speak for myself, but Linux for me, there was such a barrier in my head about yeah, I just, I'll have to learn all this stuff before I figure it out because I, it just seems like it's a like it's just too big of a thing to get into, right? It just seemed like it was something that was too hard, but it really isn't. It was as simple as booting off of this drive and I'm in. I can really just start like unpacking my stuff and making myself at home here. Especially getting one of these distros where like everything is already here. I mean, like you can't argue with that, especially if you don't really want to do all the headache of setting it up yourself. You kind of just want a get up and go situation where you can just plug in and start. This is it. This is great. And yeah, like it already has LibreOffice on here. So you have that. There's so many different services and tools just here and ready to rock. I mean, it looks, yeah, it, it just, it looks a little different than what I've seen on other operating systems, but it's fine. It like, Everything works just as you would expect it to work. I'm honestly impressed. I thought I was gonna have to spend a bunch of time in the terminal to get this thing set up, and it wasn't like that at all. Again, just the USB stick and boot it up and I'm in. And like the base set of features are already in here. And again, if you just go into this software manager, 
then you just have access to all of these other things like Blender and Discord, things like Audacity, as I said, Spotify's in here. I honestly don't even know what to even do in here right now. I just kind of like, I'm just peeking around at some of these random apps and stuff. This is called Celluloid. It's just a media player, I guess. Okay, now I'm just installing Audacity for the fun of it as well. That's a software that I haven't used in a really long time, but if I moved over to Linux full time, I probably would. Okay, it's using my mic off of the computer, I guess. Yo, this is the Linux song. This is a Spencer starting Linux song. What's up? This is the Linux song. This is a Spencer using Linux song. What's up? Forgive me, everyone. Yo, this is the Linux song. This is a Spencer starting Linux song. What's up? This is the Linux song. This is a Spencer using Linux song. What's up? I just didn't think that it was going to be as easy as it was to get this set up. Like, I feel like I could just start using Linux right now and this could just be my setup from now on. And I might do that, but I think I just still want to go a little bit deeper before I lock in on a specific distro. I think Mint is really cool. I like to see that it's all set up like this, but I feel like a lot of the stuff that was already in here, I don't necessarily need. So... I'd probably like to start a little bit more from scratch and build it out to my liking. So I think I'm gonna try something else. I have Debian also installed on this Ventoid disk and I think I'm gonna try to boot that and see what I think. However, I think that's gonna be a little bit more boring so it'll probably be something that I include in a future video. I think that's all I really have to say on this today, guys. I just kinda of wanted to talk about trying out Linux for the first time, trying out Linux Mint in particular and booting it off of a USB stick using something like Ventoid. But honestly, folks, if you're looking to get away from the big tech ecosystem, then give Linux a try because it actually isn't scary at all. You definitely do not have to be a technical person to give this a try. If you're interested in preserving your privacy and also keeping your tech out of the landfill, then give Linux a shot. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope if you were thinking about trying Linux, you see that it's actually not that hard to do. All you need is a USB stick, put Ventoy on there, put a few different distros on there that you were maybe considering and try them all because literally it doesn't take any more than just booting into one of them, seeing if you like the feel of it, trying another one and doing the same thing. If you have any suggestions or advice for me as somebody who is very much a new Linux user, I would very much like to hear them. So let me know down in the comment section. Thanks very much for watching folks. I will see you in the next one.